silence of solitude, and we, we tried to give you a few uh, ideas on how to uh, how to uh, come to that place where you can find just maybe even just a minute during your day to, to find some silence of solitude, uh, to spend with God. Also, the nominating committee is, has begun to meet. Uh, they will be looking at uh, filling the positions of service within the church for this next year. So please be in prayer about that. And you can sign up out on the Connect Center uh, and, uh, and just then be ready for the, for the uh, uh, nominating committee to come and, and, uh, and invite you to serve uh, the church in a position this next church year. Also, the mission trip to the Dominican Republic. Dominican, yeah, the Dominican Republic is due today. There's too many D's for that. Um, but th it's due today, $500. And, uh, and so let me in, in, uh, let me remind you to uh, that you can pay. If you need to see uh, Pastor Chandler or um, Matthew Yingling, then please do so. But that uh, deposit is due today. Um, next Saturday at 10 a.m., our mother's preschoolers will meet. And then on Sunday at... Uh, after this service at noon next Sunday, we'll be having our next uh, Discover SDC uh, class. This this class is it's required for membership, but if you're just interested in, in knowing who we are, what we believe, why we believe it, uh, I want to invite you to be a part of that. We'll feed you lunch, and, uh, and then we'll have that uh, study. It'll take an hour or two for, for that study, and if uh, if you're interested in taking that class, please stop by the Connect Center and sign up there. And uh, because if we don't have anyone sign up, then we're just gonna we'll, we'll cancel this month, and, and uh, there should be another meeting next month for the following. Um, let's see, April 19th and uh, through the 21st is a family ministry seminar at uh, Country and Town Baptist Church. Uh, Rob Ranow is going to be a uh, keynote speaker for that. And uh, he will be speaking on, on the Friday night about uh, uh, husbands and wives. On Saturday, he'll talk about uh, parents and grandparents. And then uh, on Sunday, he'll be speaking uh, at Country Town Baptist Church. So uh, you can go online. You can go to our events page on the website. And you can find the link to sign up if you're interested in registering uh, for that uh, seminar. Um, also, May the 18th. Uh, will be a ladies luncheon and uh, uh, May the 18th go to the well is the uh, theme and it'll be from 1045 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon uh, lunch will be served and the guest speaker is Pam Hammond and Pam is has a background in, uh, in biblical counseling and uh, so she will be the speaker for that and if you have any questions call us $15 if you've got any questions or concerns, please see this Barbara Gallagher, uh, and she will give you all the information you need for that. Also, um, Pam Ammons, on October the 5th, we will be hosting a seminar for our community on uh, mental health, uh, emotional health, as it relates to uh, to the Bible. How, how, what does the Bible say about mental health and emotional health? And Pam Ammons is going to be the, the leader for that. Uh, for that uh, seminar in October, so please be watching out for that, sharing it with our, with your friends and family and the community. Uh, for the, uh, I tell you, one of the things that we found is that there are a lot of people out there who uh, are feel lonely. They are depressed. Uh, there's a lot of uh, concerns about even, even people and and su suicidal ideation, and so um, we think it's a very important uh, thing for. Uh, our community. Um, Vacation Bible School is coming up in, in July. If you've not yet signed up to serve in uh, Vacation Bible School, please take a moment to stop by the, uh, the Connect Center and, uh, um, and sign up for to serve in one of those positions. Yes, ma'am. Next Sunday, hospitality meeting, hospitality team meeting next Sunday. Okay. Um, you know, for several years now, we've been uh, providing uh, meals, backpack ministry meals for uh, you know, Kennerdale to the high school and to some in the, the middle school. And uh, 
and, and that's been a great program uh, but we've come to a place where they are uh, Kennerdale is is remodeling and their storage area for where they keep the food is full and so they're in the process of remodeling so what they've asked us is if you're giving to uh, the backpack ministry to just postpone your giving hold off on your giving they got they said they're, they're they've got enough for now until they can create more space uh, in their after they re finish remodeling and then we'll pick back up in probably September in uh, in providing more of these these meals for these young people who uh, who need something to eat on on the weekends um, they get meals at school uh, during the week, but on the weekends, uh, they need some help. And so w it's been a, a great program. We want to continue to do that. But if you're giving, just hold off until September. Um, last but not least, our missions moment is uh, our Dominican Republic team again. And uh, we want to uh, certainly pray for them, pray for the work that they're going to be doing uh, in August in the Dominican Republic. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father God, thank you. Thank you for uh, the beauty of today. Uh, Father, thank you for the beauty of who you are. Uh, Father, thank you for Jesus, whom you sent to die on a cross uh, for our sins. Uh, Father, thank you for allowing us to come to gather in this house um, as friends, as family. Uh, Father, as brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, as we've come today, uh, God, that you would... Um, allow your spirits to work in our hearts and our minds father let your spirit guide us uh, and teach us and father that you would um, uh, just remove all the distractions of the world for a little while that we might focus completely on you father we pray for our nation we pray for its healing we pray father uh, for our men and women in uniform our first responders uh, and our military god that you would protect them as they go about their duties Father, may you receive from us today the meditations or the, the, our, our, the songs that we sing as sacrifice of praise, and may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Guide us, Father, as we worship. Lead our hearts to worship. Bring our hearts to worship and engage our minds uh, that we worship in spirit and in truth, Father, that we uh, are focused not just on uh, the sound of our own voices, but, Father, we focus on what we're singing to you. <clears throat> so, Father, Father, be glorified today in all that we do and say. In Christ's name, amen. Well, good morning again. You might notice a familiar face over here to my right. We just figured out it's been like a year since my friend Jeff... Not this one. Sorry, he's familiar. The guy in the cage over here. So we welcome Jeff back after like a year's hiatus and thank his family for letting us borrow him. So uh, we are very excited to have him and we are very excited to continue to worship. Listen, buddy, we are always excited to have you.
song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things have been. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all around you. Father, search our hearts. Father, help us to live out what we're singing as we're praising you and worshiping you. Cleanse us from any sin that is in our hearts, Lord. So you hear our songs of praise and you hear our prayers. Father, as we woke up this morning and took our first breath, Maybe some of you got to go see the sunrise. Lord, what a beautiful masterpiece you created for us to enjoy. Just another example of how you reveal yourselves to us each day. Father, if the lost would only open their eyes and open their hearts, the glory of our God is all around them. Father, we pray for just each person in this room. And Father, we pray that if anyone here has yet to realize your majesty, your glory, your grace, that this might be the day, Lord, that they would call upon your Son, Jesus Christ, to be their risen Savior. We are so blessed. And Father, we come to you with humble hearts of gratitude for the ways you have provided for us. We ask you now to lift up Pastor Tim as he challenges us with this message from Peter. Father, let each person hear. Just hear exactly what they need so they can go out and continue to live their lives for you and glorify you and praise you in the name of Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray this morning. Amen.
right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let me invite you to now turn your Bibles to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, as we continue our series through 1 Peter. And as you're finding your way to 1 Peter chapter 4, Charles Spurgeon said, I beg you to remember that there is no getting quit of sin. There is no escaping from its power except by contact and union with the Lord Jesus Christ. H.B. Charles said, The flesh fights for you to be happy without God. The world fights for you to fit in without God. The devil fights for you to be religious without God. So how are we to fight this battle and win this fight for our souls? How are we to be armed for the new life that we have in, in Christ Jesus? How are we supposed to do that? What does God expect from his followers? What does God expect from his followers so that we might win this battle for our souls? And I want you to keep those questions in mind as we read this passage from 1 Peter. We're going to start our reading this morning in verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, we'll go through verse 6. And, uh, and so please, I invite you to stand with me if you're able. All right, Peter writes, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same understanding because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin in order to live the remaining time in the flesh no longer for human desires but for God's will for there has already been enough time spent in doing what the Gentiles choose to do carrying on in unrestrained behavior evil desires drunkenness orgies carousing and lawless idolatry they're surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living and they slander you. They will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was also preached to those who are now dead, so that, although they might be judged in the flesh according to human standards, they might live in the spirit according to God's standards. Father, again, thank you so much for your word. Father, I pray that your spirit would teach us, uh, Father, the message that you have for us through the your word in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. All right. The very first word in chapter one, the very first word is therefore. What are you supposed to do when you see therefore? You're supposed to ask, why is it therefore? All right? How does it connect? And I think what we're talking about here is this. Peter is saying, now in light of all that I've taught you, all that I've told you thus far, all that I've written about Christ Jesus. And in the previous sections, I've talked to you about the fact that Christ suffered, the righteous for the unrighteous, suffered to pay our sin debt. He suffered and died to pay for our sins and his resurrection to give us new life. And so we then are to be armed for this new life so therefore he says arm yourselves with the same understanding arm yourselves with the same understanding arm yourselves that's military language right that's that's military language language there's there's no as soldiers get ready to go into battle they don't they make sure that they put on their armor uh their their they get all their kit their uh, they make sure that they're ready and armed and have everything that they need before they enter into, into battle. How many of us, though, have a routine? Every morning, you go through the same routine. Never fails. Same routine every morning. Does that routine include arming yourself for spiritual battle? If not, it should. Most of us just go, we, we have the same routine. We, we get up, we have our coffee, 
We don't have any conversation until after we've had our first three cups. And then, you know, and, and so we have this, this routine, but the reality is most of us go about this routine almost mindless and, and never consider the fact that I'm going out into a spiritual battle today. I need to prepare for that. I need to arm myself for this spiritual battle. And, and the tone of this command, it is a command, the tone of this command is one of priority. It's, it's one of priority. It's that the, what Peter is saying through God, what God is saying through Peter is arm yourself with the same understanding that as a Christian you're going to suffer just as the righteous suffer for the unrighteous. You're going to suffer. You need to arm yourself and you need to do it now. Don't wait. Do it now. And so what that means is we accept and we adopt the reality that if, as, if Christ suffered in the flesh, we too will suffer. We're going to suffer in the flesh. If anyone told you that being a Christian meant you were never going to suffer again, they misled you. Christians are not immune from suffering in this life. And he says, look, just as Christ, though, suffered once in the flesh to provide victory, we talked about victory last week, to provide victory over sin, now in Christ we are commanded to suffer patiently. And we are to stay faithful to our life in Christ, this new life we've been given and we are to die to the, our old ways of life and live for the new way of life notice what in verse 2 there notice his references to time there's a refer, there's two references to time there first he talks about the past he says no longer no longer are you supposed to live to satisfy your human desires and then he talks about the present and the future he says the remaining time that is now and what remains of our life whatever how many days God gives us the remaining time we are to live for God's will and so he says in, in he says arm yourself with the same understanding that even in our, uh, our suffering for the, for the remaining time in our flesh, the remaining time of our lives, we are going to suffer and we don't need to spend that time trying to satisfy the desires of our flesh, but instead satisfying and living for the will of God. And we need to take it seriously. We need to take it seriously. Listen, the struggle with sin is very real. You know that. The struggle with sin is, is very real. But our commitment is to obedience. And see, while, while Jesus has set us free from our slavery to sin, we still give in to it. We still let it beat us. I mean, the reality is there are some sinful... If we're honest, if we're honest with ourselves, there are some sinful actions and attitudes that we like. We like them. We enjoy them. And sometimes, sometimes we might even think, well, this Christian life, man, this ain't fun. This is all stuffy. There's no fun in this. But is life found in fun? That's not where life is found. Life isn't found in the fun. Life is found in faith. And yet many of us, we live defeated in our struggle with sin because we refuse to sacrifice 
what the battle requires of us. We're not willing to give it up. We're not willing to do what it takes to get the victory over our sin problem. What are you not willing to give up? What are you not willing to do or give up in order to forget your old way of life and stop trying to satisfy your old way of life and live for the live this new life that you've been given? And Peter says, listen, stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. He says, look, you've had enough sin for a lifetime. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. You've had enough sin to last you for a lifetime. Stop doing it. Give it up. Don't go back there. And so for the Christian then, we, stop, we need to stop wasting our life and start living totally for Christ. So Peter shows us really that we're in a war. We, we're in a, a war. Whether you like it or not, you are in a war. This is, a, this is relentless combat with the world, with the flesh, with the devil. So, you better arm yourself. Peter says you better arm yourself with the understanding that your Savior suffered and you will too. You might as well go ahead and get it in your mind. He says, arm yourself with the same understanding. He says, go ahead and get it in your mind. Go ahead, figure it out. Get it in your mind that you are going to suffer because your Savior suffered. So arm yourself. And he says, verse 3, there's already been enough time. There's been enough time doing what the Gentiles choose to do. And then he tells us what that is. Carrying on in unrestrained behavior, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and lawless idolatry. There are times in our life when we look back and it's not healthy. It's not, it's not helpful. Because what we do sometimes is we look back and, and we look back at, at our life before Christ and we long for those days. We want things like they were before I came to Christ. You know, some people, some people do that. And it's not helpful because when we look, when we look in the rearview mirror, sometimes the devil is going to put it in your mind, hey, don't you want that? Don't you miss that? Don't you remember the good old days? Don't you remember when you were running with the crowd? Don't you remember those things? Don't you want that again? And so sometimes looking in the rearview mirror is not a good thing. There's a reason why the rearview mirror is small in your car and the front, the, the, the windshield is big. So what Peter does then, he lists some of these activities that the Gentiles or the non-Christians, what they do. And these are things that should be in the, our past life, not our now life. Right? First he says unrestrained behavior. This is the person who has no restraints in their life. They got no filter, no restraints, especially when it comes to sexual morality or violent behavior or public decency. They don't care. They don't care. He says evil desires. This is a person who takes the, the who perverts the natural desires that we have and they make them sinful they make them sinful desires then the the drunkenness the orgies carousing can really all be uh lumped together and it basically is under this uh, under control of alcohol this un our inability to control ourselves when we're under the influence of alcohol one commentary i read said it, it, it's kind of like 
describing a, a group of friends who go to a ball game and they are, they're enjoying the ball game and, and then after the ball game they decide to stop at the bar and have a drink and then another and then another and then another and then another until they've had way too many. And then they just, they, they just, they're, they're just living life at large and they're disturbing the peace, they're disturbing the whole process. And may, maybe you've been there. Maybe you've seen it. Then he talks about lawless idolatry. And we don't know exactly what he's talking about, lawless idolatry. But if you think about the Roman culture, if you think about how sinful and how immoral the Roman culture was, that this is so bad, even the Romans said it was illegal. It had to be bad. It had to be really bad. So Peter is saying, look, stop that. Even the Romans think that's bad. Don't just stop that. Don't do that. And you know, the reality is not a whole lot has changed in 2,000 years. In all of this, not much has changed at all. Warren Wiersbe said this. He said, we may not have been guilty of such gross sins in our pre-conversion days, but we are still sinners. And our sins helped to crucify Christ. So then how foolish it would be to go back to that kind of life. So, don't answer this, but what are some of your go-to pleasures? What are some of your go-to pleasures? Here's another question as we go to the next verse. What will or what did your friends think of you when you committed the rest of your life to Jesus Christ? You know, what did your friends think of you? That group that you used to run with, now you've changed, you've committed yourself, your life to following Jesus Christ, no longer desiring and fulfilling the flesh, but living to obey Him and serve Him. What, is your, what do your friends think of you? Verse 4. He said, They are surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living, and so they slander you. Maybe that happened to you, maybe it didn't. See, the, the unsaved world thinks there's something wrong with us. They, they think that there's something wrong with us because we want to live to serve and to please our Lord and Savior. They don't, they don't understand it. They think we're, it's wrong. They think it's weird if we don't accept or participate in their loose living anymore. And see, the, to... To them, our, the change that we've had in our life is just weird. It's strange. And they don't like it. They don't like it when we don't want to go along with them anymore, when we don't want to run with, with them with anymore. We don't want to, to, to do the things that they're doing. They don't understand it. They don't like it. And then they begin to call us names say things about us like we're stuck up or goody two shoes or you know holier than thou or you could probably come up with all kinds of adjectives that that maybe you've heard uh used against you because your desire to serve christ or maybe that was you one time maybe that was you maybe that was you that thought committed christians were weird they were strange. Maybe that was you that talked trash about them. The word that Peter uses here for slander is the word blaspheme. And it means to, to, to slander, to speak evil of, to vilify someone. And now the shoe is on the other foot. And they're talking about us slandering, vilifying, talking evil about us. But the, listen, here's the key though. That word blaspheme 
what that means is whenever they call you names or they speak evil of you or they talk trash about you simply because you don't want to run with them anymore and you want to serve and live for God, that word, they're not blaspheming you. They're blaspheming your Lord. You belong to Him. And they might, you might be the target. They might be calling you names or talking trash about you, but ultimately they're blaspheming God. And guess what? All accounts will be settled in the end. All accounts will be settled in the end. Look at verse 5. They will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. See, even if we look out there in the world, we look at our friends and our families and we think, we say, you know, those are, they're living the good life. They're having fun. They're enjoying life. You know, they, they've got everything going on and, and they're just happy. Listen, no, they're not. They're miserable. And if, if those people who are living the good life, if they're living the good life and they're living by the world's rules, guess what? This life is going to be a waste of time for them. It is a waste of time, especially in light of eternity. Romans 14, 12 says, so then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Hebrews 4, 13 says, no creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who, to whom we must give an account. Matthew 25, 32, all nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. It's all going to come out in the wash. All accounts will be settled in the very end. Jesus is coming back to sit as the righteous judge. And he's going to vindicate his people. He's going to vindicate his people. People who have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. He will vindicate us. And for those who have rejected him, he will reject. You don't have to fear what people are saying about you. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about what they think about you just because you're living to serve your Lord better for you to do that and he says look death is you can't even escape this judgment at death you cannot escape it look at verse 6 he says for this reason what reason the reason that judges that Jesus is going to judge for this reason that Jesus is going to judge the gospel was preached to those who are now dead. These are people who, who heard the gospel while they were alive. They heard it, they received it, they embraced it, they enjoyed it, they lived it. He said this gospel was preached to those who are now dead so that although they might be judged in the flesh according to human standards, in other words, these are people, people who were Christians, who suffered. They were humiliated. They were slandered. They were treated poorly according to human standards. Maybe even they died as martyrs. But he says, they might have, they might have suffered by human standards but they might live in the spirit according to God's standards listen those who have heard the gospel and responded to it by repentance from their sin and turning in faith to Jesus Christ will avoid judgment Christian, you will not be judged for your sin. 
Jesus has already done that for you. You will be judged. You have to give an account for what you've done since then. How have you spent your life? Have you spent it for yourself or are you spending it for God? You have to give an account for that. But the difference is those who reject Jesus will spend eternity separated from him for those who belong to him. Okay, so your crown might, have, might not be quite as gold as somebody else's. I don't know how that works. It's more about reward. I like how Psalm 1 deals with this. Psalm 1, it's on the board. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. He's like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears fruit in its season. It leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, he prospers. And then verse 4. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the, the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to, leads to ruin. So it's all going to come out in the wash. So what does that mean? What is the point? It means, Christian, you and I must arm ourselves. We must arm ourselves with decisive intent to live a holy life. We have to, we, we have to reject any desire to satisfy our flesh and turn and live for Christ. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Again in Galatians 5.24, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. So, how do we live this out? Listen, you should feel a little bit strange when you're around sin. It should feel a little bit weird to you. He's, but don't compromise with it. Don't play with it. Don't compromise with it. I like what one pastor said. He says, ask yourself how strange you feel around people who are giving their lives to sin. How strange do you feel when you are in circumstances where sinful speech is being used and sinful activities are going on? How strange do you feel if you're watching television? Or a movie and sinful activities are being portrayed. He says, if you don't feel strange, it is evident that you are not through with sin. You have not, you haven't done, won this battle over sin. Second, we have to deny ourselves. We have to deny self. We have to deny oneself. We have to cease from sin. Listen, don't waste your time. Don't waste the rest of your life trying to satisfy your fleshly desires. Don't do that. In fact, who cares? Who cares about what people think about you? How, who cares that they think you're strange for trying to live a holy life or, or living for the will of God? See, here's the thing. They might judge you by their standards, they're human standards. But one day, one day, you're going to live with God in the Spirit and He's going to judge you according to His standards. So when you are in those strange situations where you might feel strange or they think you're strange, just think about well, how God sees you. What does He think about you? That's the only thing that matters. And he's going to make everything right when he returns as judge. Thirdly, <clears throat> commit yourself. Arm yourself. Don't wait. Do it today. Commit yourself 
to do God's will for the rest of your life. And you can do that by just being fed up with sin altogether. And be willing to accept and endure the strange looks or the cruel words or even possible mistreatment that might come from the world. Do you remember what H.B. Charles said? The flesh fights for you to be happy without God. The world fights for you to fit in without God. And the devil fights for you to be religious without God. Chuck Swindoll says Peter's point is clear. Christ didn't send us in the world to, as vacationers on a self-guided tour of a playground, but as soldiers on a tour of duty in a battlefield. We're not called to kick back, relax, take in the scenery, and wait for our guide to take us home. We're engaged in a fierce conflict on foreign soil. We need to arm ourselves with spiritual armor to withstand the temptations of this world. So let me ask you this. Are you winning or are you losing the battle? Are you winning or are you losing the battle? Arm yourselves with the understanding that following Jesus Christ is going to cost you. It's going to cost you. But the price is worth it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this day. Father, thank you for your blessings. Uh, Father, thank you for your word through Peter. Uh, Father, what a challenge it is for us uh, to deny self, to deny our flesh, uh, and to live according to your will and for your glory. And so, Father, um, may your spirit uh, work in our hearts even now. Uh, Father, that you convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment. And Father, that you would lead us in the right way. Uh, Father, thank you now. In Christ's name, amen. Please stand with us. These guys are going to uh, offer us an opportunity for response. Maybe you're here today and, uh, uh, you know, maybe you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus. Well, I'd love to talk with you about that. I'd love to pray with you about that. Um, just, you can come down here and I, I'd love to talk with you more about that. Christian, it's a challenge for us to get out of our routine and make sure that, that we're putting on the armor, that we are preparing ourselves for battle every single day, every moment of every day. Maybe you're here this morning, you're looking for a church home. Our tradition is you just come down here and let me know that, and we'll get you started on your pathway to membership. Um, whatever God has laid on your heart this morning, be obedient to Him. If you just need somebody to pray with you, I'd love to do that. I'll be right here for a few moments. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh Spirit, come make us home. They're going to come and take this morning's offering, and uh, uh, we're going to play one more song, and then I'll pray for us, and we will be dismissed. But before we play the last song, I just wanted to show you, as he preached today, I was like, man, 
How many of you use the Bible app? Anybody in here in the morning? Yeah, what was it all about this week? Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, putting on the armor of God. So when my phone broke last year in May, I went three months without it. It was a really fun time. Some people here were trying to get a hold of me, like, sorry, I'm just not getting one. But when I got one, my lovely wife over here got me this, and it's a thing with the soldier with the armor of God and the cross behind him, and it makes me think, like, about, he looks very powerful, like, very powerful. And one of the things he talks about this week was that shield of faith as one of the most important things to stop those fiery darts from the enemy that we know are coming. And most of the things in this verse is about being defensive. But there are some offensive things as well, like that helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit through the word of God. So as we go out through this week and on, think about putting that on every day. And uh, as we know, it might be difficult, but certainly not impossible with the help of Jesus. Maybe some goodies down in the fellowship hall, so make sure you stop by on your way out. Spend some time uh, talking to one another and getting to know one another. If you're our guest, let me invite you to, to stick around, and uh, we'd love to get to know you a little bit more. But uh, let me pray for you, and thank you for uh, being here this morning. Uh, and uh, remember, you might think it's impossible, but it is not. You can do this. We can do this in the help of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this day. Father, I lift up your people. I pray that you would uh, just be present in their lives. Let them know your presence and your peace. 
Father, watch over them, keep them close to you, and Father, use them in a mighty way to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you.